Now, I sent them blueprints of the house, not blueprints, but I drew up a rough sketch. And supposedly this is $1,700 worth of uh, roofing material. They say it will cover the entire roof. I just assumed it would be more, because you know, just seems like it should be more. All right, let's get started. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to start pre-drilling these panels. Now, the reason I'm going to pre-drilling, it's not required, but here's my mentality behind it. If I stack five or six panels together, I pre-drill them all. When they go up there, all the holes will match up. They will all be identical, so there's no need for me to screw around up there. We're trying to make sure everything looks right. If I right. do them down here with all of them stacked up on top of each other, the holes will be in the exact same spot on every single panel. Boom, all done. I will leave one panel that's already pre-drilled. So that way, when I go get the next, you know, five or six panels and set them up like this, I'll just take that panel and use it as a template and I'll just keep going like that. Now there's only one place that I'm not gonna pre-drill the panels and that's gonna be right where the, the secondary gable roof comes in. I'll show you that shortly. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so per the original directions, I need to be in the flat. That's where they want me to put these screws. The second thing is I am going to have an inch of overhead. So one inch up from the bottom is going to put me right on my roof line. I think I'm going to go about three inches up from that. So I'm going to be three inches from the edge. That's where I'm going to put my, my screw. That will put me two inches back off the edge of the roof. Part of directions, I'm supposed to on the bottom go next to each rib, flat, 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 next to each rib. And then the top will be the same and everything in the middle, I'll need to be in one flat next to each rib. I don't need to do it on each side of it. I got these all marked up. I'm going to go ahead and pre-drill. Make sure the panels are staying even. Oh, I just lost my drill bit. Now what we're going to do is every two feet up, we're going to go ahead and drill holes. Now we're going to cut it a little bit short on the top. Not cut, but uh, drill a little bit off of the top. Let's go two inches away from the edge. Same thing here. We go two inches from the roof. All right. Let's start drilling. Woo, that was a close one. Ah, still got me. Kind of seems awkward to drill holes in what's supposed to be coating your roof, but it's the only way to attach it. Oh. All right, pre-drilled.
So, I had what I thought was a vented roof cap, but I was wrong. It is not a vented roof cap, which is stupid, especially in Florida. So, I started digging off the existing roof cap. I thought these were vented shingles, had a little vent underneath, but I was wrong. They're just shingles with a metal plate underneath them. I mean, you can see they just pull up nice and easy. So, what I got to do is, uh, now this metal plate just covers it up, so I'm just going to pop this bad boy off. I'm going to make myself a vented roof, because I need one in Florida, desperately. So I just get under there and pop this bad boy off. Just like that, nice and easy. Same thing on the other side. Not really worried about destroying anything because all this is going to be under the brand new metal roof anyways. So if you accidentally gouge a shingle, who cares? Now, it is leaving all these pesky nails everywhere. So I've been trying to pick them up anywhere I can find them. So once I've popped it, I just pull it back. Like this. And I've just been pulling it as I go. But, can we pick up all the nails? Because it's easier to pick up the nails here than it is on the ground. So, throw them over here in my nail bucket. This is my nail bucket slash scrap piece bucket. I'm going to throw those shingles out of the way. Now, here's the great part, though. With no modification at all, this is actually a vented roof. And here's how I know. I am reaching inside my attic space. That is good. So the way a vented roof works is you've got the holes on the soffit underneath. The hot air in your attic, which is hot, is going to want to rise. It's going to come out through here. Once it comes out through here, cold air has to replace that. So it sucks cold air in. So it's a constant ventilation system. Um, so I'm probably going to just remove all this here just to open this up more and cut this out. It, this is just the... Um, original uh, vapor membrane or water membrane I'm sorry this is the original water vapor membrane I'm just gonna cut that out so this is nice and open and then our roof cap will sit there and it will vent the entire After roof you pull up the all the whatever this metal panel is just make sure there's no nails protruding up I just pound them in and uh, if there's no nails protruding up and uh, you're set to go don't want them protruding up and breaking the metal or bending the now, metal. It is very important, as you can see, we're already through the roof, but the camera didn't record this specific thing. So, it is very important to get this first panel set correctly. If this first panel is set correctly, everything else will just flow. You don't have to measure or change or do anything. Uh, there's very little wiggle room in the panels, meaning that if it starts being off, there's not much you can do to try to bring it back around. Uh, like with shingling, it's easy. You just start changing your pitch slowly and you can bring it back. Uh, with this, there's not a whole lot to do. There's a little bit of wiggle room, but not much. So what we do um, is if you get this first panel 100% square, it will flow through and be fine. 
Um, once you have this one where you think it's square, I went ahead and put three other panels out, or maybe it was two. I went ahead and put two other panels out and just using one screw for everything, two screws, one in the top, one in the bottom, for each panel, then I could see, okay, is this first panel very square? If everything didn't look like it was gonna line out and go out nicely, then I'd have to adjust this first panel. Once that was set, I went ahead and set this panel in using all the screws. I then, from here, started screwing in each panel down, and now, as you can see, we're down the roof a lot farther. So, um, it also didn't record when I put that vent pipe through. I have one more vent pipe to put through, so we'll be safe there. So I'll go ahead and record that shortly. But let's go ahead and get over here to this uh, little peak thing that I've got, and we'll go ahead and get this set up. Okay, now that we're this far, what we need to do is put this valley in on this little gable piece. This is a little valley piece, so the panels will run into this way, and these panels will run this way, and this catches all of it and just shoves it down the, down the way. Now, since it's made square, we need to trim the end. That way it will be nice and flush with the end of the roof. After we do that, we're gonna bolt it down and then on this part up here, we'll have to seal it and put a secondary piece so it can make it all the way up. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and mark it and trim it. All right, now we're just gonna trim on my line. There we go, trimmed edge. Now we're gonna Go ahead and place it. Okay, and this is how we want to make our uh, valley piece look. It's gonna sit nice. It's gonna be nice and even with the one inch overhang on the edge of the roof. And actually I had to remove that screw and this panel's already screwed into it. So we're gonna go ahead and put this down. We're not gonna screw this down because when we run these panels on top, those screws will be going through this. And that should be enough at that point. So, now the question is, you have these panels and now you're going to hit one of these gables. How do you know where to cut? So here's the full panel. Now, I did pretty much this. I know where this is at. This is in its correct spot. The uh, valley metal piece, whatever exactly they call it, the valley piece. So I laid my panel down, set it up, um, pretty much that corner, made it even, made sure it was correct on the top, and then I put a, you know, one or two screws just to hold it in place, and then what I did is I came down here, and I estimated where do I want this to be, so I just made a little snip in it. All right, after I did that, I came up here and estimated over, you know, I want about that much space. So I went ahead and made a little snip there. After I did that, I, using a straight edge, I pretty much just connected to two clip marks. After I connected them, I made a pencil line all the way through. And then I took my aircraft snips. I went through and I just cut it. After I cut it, actually came out pretty good it's, it's pretty much a dead even the same amount the whole way down I mean uh, the cut's a little wavy because you're using aircraft snips but or tin snips or whatever you want to call them but from the ground it looks great so that's all I care about so now what I have here is actually a really good item so I'm gonna show you how to cut the next because now that we've got this set right we got this exactly how we want it. So now we actually have a template for how to cut the next one. So our line will be now. exactly the same. So 
because we cut this panel out. The panel was this way, we cut it. Now, due to great parts of ge geometry, if we take this, rotate it 180 degrees, lay it back in, it is identical to what we need. Actually, I'm a little high. I'm gonna slide it down a little bit. So, because of that, this now follows my straight edge. This is the exact edge that I want. So, the problem is now, so as you can see, by flipping the panel that we cut, it follows the exact edge that we want. Now, here's the problem. Great, fine and nanny if the panel was long enough, but it's not. But what we can do now is use this as a template. So what I'm going to do is measure from the peak of the roof down, then take that measurement, and I'll show you what we're going to do with that. So measuring from the corner of the panel and down, it's 59 and a quarter inches until I hit this panel, and this panel is correct, currently positioned where I want it. So 59 and a quarter. So we take our panel. Make sure you lay it the way you want it, which is the opposite way this panel is actually. Made. So make sure your panel is laying the correct way, which this is not. in the correct way. Take our cut panel. Lay it where we need it. Alright, so now we're going to measure 59 and a quarter down. Oh, that was actually pretty damn close. There we go. We are at 59 and a quarter. We are exactly where we want to be. So 59 and a quarter is where we want to be. Using the uh, tried and true method of measure twice, cut once. 59 and a quarter. Okay. So what we do now, since this panel's where we want it to be, and this is where we want our cut, just trace you out your line to cut on. And now, thank you to this panel, we know exactly where we want to cut. Now, I'm sure there's got to be a better way to do this than what I'm doing. Oh, that worked out well. But, these are what I have. This is what I got to work with, so. Alright, let's lay this bad boy in place, see how we did. Not too damn bad. Alright, let's put this panel, start getting this panel in. Now remember, these are this edge, always goes under. So, I purposely left the last couple screws undone. And slide it up. Oh, I left all but the last one up here. Oh, it made it work. There you go. Once it's in a spot that you like it, going to secure her down.
Okay, per the manufacturer's recommendations, there needs to be six inches of overlap. So we're pretty much there. Um, to overlap the slider. To overlap this V, the valley, six inches of overlap. And then we're gonna use this. I don't know if I'm supposed to put it in there, but that eh, just seems like a good idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it. And they sold me this stuff and I don't really know what the hell it's for. So this sticky gooey stuff. So I'm gonna cut out a piece that'll fit in there. And it'll smash down real nice. Uh, here's the sticky group stuff. Look, it's already sticking to itself. Check. Okay, well, this is obvious. Try that again. This time with no gloves. Hopefully, I don't get cut. Alright. Let's try that one more time. About that long. Okay, I'm gonna set that there. So, what I need to do is slide over enough. And then we'll pick up this panel enough. And we'll stick this under there. I'm gonna stick it a little bit higher. Somewhere in there looks sufficient. Off the backing. There we go. In there. Probably already cut me. Now on a nice hot day, that is going to just melt right down. So from side. Right, so now what we need to do is make a hole for this vent pipe. I'm fortunate I only have two, and the last one I've already done. However, I'm really fortunate on this one that it ends up right on the edge of the panel. Now normally if it was in the middle of the panel, you'd have to mark where you're going to be cutting, pre-drill some holes until you can get your wire snipped or your uh, tin snips in there and then you would just trim it out. Now, you can take a measurement from the end of the panel up and see where it's at. Now, I know that this pipe is, I believe it's an inch and a half diameter. Yeah, inch and three quarters actually is the outside diameter. Here's the thing, with this great little apparatus, you don't even have to be that close. You can have a half an inch to an inch of leeway on each side and not even have to worry about it because this boot will cover all of that as you put it over. Now, I'm going to go ahead and trim this panel. What I'm doing is I'm just eyeballing it because it's on the edge of the panel. But like I said, normally you wouldn't have to measure either from the peak or from the base of the panel to find your center point. And then you would have to measure, you know, from your panel out. And that way you basically center it on the thing, drill a hole, cut it out, and then it's set. So let me go ahead and make my measurements and uh, I'm going to cut it out. On this inch and three quarters, I would probably cut it out at two and a half inches from the center, giving you plenty of wiggle room because you're going to be off a little bit. Well, now, as you can see, it ain't very pretty looking, but it'll be just fine because it'll go right around that. Now I'm going to go ahead and slide the panel in place and then we'll go over how to put this actual uh, ring on. Let me go ahead and get the panel secured. As you can see, it isn't the cleanest cut in the world, but it doesn't matter with one of these. Knock all the yuck out of it. It's been sitting up here for a little while. Alright. So. Let me take off my gloves for this. Hopefully there's still enough light for you all to see what I'm doing. Take yourself a razor blade 
if you look here, it's marked two and a quarter to two and three quarters right up here. So you go ahead and you cut around and open it up for the size of pipe that you have. If I remember, I cut right in here last time. Yeah, this blade sucks. Now you want this to be snug where you have to like force it on. I mean it is a water seal. Granted we are going to be also using silicone on it, but it is still a water seal. So you still need to, it needs to be tight. Alright. So we'll just test fit it real quick. This pipe must be bigger. You want it to stretch over and that it does it stretches over it just nicely okay so what this does is so what I do is kind of line it all up I'm going to kind of press it down into all the curves on the roof. i got a lightning storm in my left. Damn Florida weather. So, something like that. Now, what we do is we get the silicone that came with it. Now, make sure you have... i got to do this quick. i got a storm moving in. Make sure you have some paper towels. Make sure everything's relatively clean. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some silicone around the edge of this pipe. All the way around the edge here. This is probably overkill, but I don't care. I'd rather have too much when it comes to silicone than not enough, especially in a part like this. Okay. We're going to silicone along the inside of this as well. Your hands are going to get messy. Don't wear gloves. Or wear disposables. And now silicone. All of this in here. I hope I'm getting it. Specifically in this area, give it a lot where it's going to go up and down on the valleys of the roof. Once you're content with what you're giving it, go ahead and line it all back up. Push it down. Now, this is where it gets tricky. Some kind of weirdo boot shaped thing that does here. I'm gonna take all this and all back around on the outer edge here. Just kind of make sure it's got a good seal on it. Wipe your finger off. Now you're going to want to put about 100,000 nut or uh, screws into it. A lot. More so than what you would think a normal person would ever use. Now, my hands running around. 
Make sure it's got a good seal. Anywhere you think you're lacking, just go get some more. Make sure it's a good seal all the way around. And that's about it. All right, I gotta get off this roof. So now what we gotta do is put on these ridge caps. I've already started. This is why I decided to video it. So if the ridge cap just sits there, there's an air gap there, which is great, except for critters. Critters can get all up under there and make their home in your attic, and it's just it ain't good. So what they supply you with on this specific kit is this. Uh, Looks like a Scotch Bright pad. It's a roll of it. It's got a little bit of adhesive, but the adhesive is only there to hold it there for uh, temporarily while uh, you basically position it. Because then when you screw it in, it will hold itself. Uh, the screws will be holding it in. So you just unroll it all. Usually is a pain in the ass towards the end. There we go. All right. So this ridge cap is going to overlap about six inches, which is about there. And I need to make sure that these underneath here, I've already got one that ends at about this point. So this one will need to come to approximately the same point. So we're just gonna stick him on there. You don't want it to overhang too much. Basically you're just sticking it on there to hold it there until you can until we screw it down. Like that. Now I'm just gonna repeat the exact same thing. See how that's on there? Right along the edge there. Now oh, that's hot. Here comes a little bit trickier part. So. needs to happen is these need to actually peel down a little bit and they're going to need to go underneath. So this piece needs to go under this piece but we're also going to put an adhesive strip there. Basically like a little piece of like a glue strip almost. And you just stick it right in there. And I think what this does is keeps it from um, back flush it or you know uh, the water just uh, slowly seeping its way through here and then dropping down in I think it's basically just acts as a barrier so now we're gonna do this under here now I'd already put this on here to uh, because we are having rain come through, so I temporarily put it on here. That. All right. Now. That'll stick. I'll go ahead and run my screws back in. So I've already put the screws here. And here. I found that it's easier to line everything up. If you put them all in a row and then just kind of eyeball it, make it look good. So I found that that's the easiest way to fasten it on each side. And then I'm going to go ahead and put a couple connectors in the middle, kind of squeeze it together because it does like to bow out. 
Every single ridge you put a uh, screw down in.